Why not? Hey, everybody. It's Tuesday, September 17th. Um, you're here at the weekly chaos community call. Oh, right, there now we have Kevin. Okay, we have six people now, um, slowly trickling in. So yeah, I hope everybody's doing great. Let me put the minutes here in the chat for you all. There you go. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, here we go. Make sure I open this chat window just so I don't miss anything important. Um, we have a small crowd today. Everybody is at OSSEU. Not everybody. A lot of people are at OSSEU. Um, so we will probably be going over this stuff again next, <laughs> next week when we have a bigger group, but that's okay. If you want to tell us what your time of day that is your favorite would be great. I, I like the end. Matt's a morning person. I like this time because you're now you're done with everything. It's kind of like your free time. I don't know. For me, it is anyway. But I know you're a morning person, Matt. So, yeah. Um, okay, so first on the agenda is we are looking for new event badgers. If you are interested in doing that, um, it's it's a great way to get involved with chaos and you do not have to have any chaos experience necessary you don't need to know about metrics or software or anything um, you're basically just helping event organizers uh, be more inclusive and welcoming by just going through a checklist and um, offering suggestions where you can and we'll give you all that you need to know in order to be a badger so if you are interested in that or just even want to hear more about it it's no obligation like if you come to one of these meetings you're not automatically signed up um, we have two scheduled here september 25th and october 2nd so um, you don't have to register anything just show up uh, these link to the event so you can add it to your calendar however you want if you want to attend either of those and you just need to attend one not both so that is that is there is are we ready? Is there a reason like is it just to continue to provide like I, yeah i think we are actually looking for new new <clears> folks <throat> um, we're getting we're getting a little behind i think on our event applications so we okay. just want to make sure we have enough badgers okay okay when well, i know it's a is this a busy, this is a busy time of the year isn't it right now it does get very busy yeah yeah for okay. sure okay as everything starts to, you know, in the spring and they're all. Um, that might be worth promoting more than just here. I'm thinking in Slack as well. Yeah. That's a good idea. I will do that. Uh, actually, I don't know if I did. No, I guess I didn't. Okay. Yes, I will do that for sure. Okay. Um, do you think we need to make it broader? So I put it in the newsletter also, but do you think we need to do something special, even like on LinkedIn or something like that? Like just I to get thought, outside? I, I thought that too. Um, let's just maybe start with Slack and see how that goes. And okay. if you're like not getting much interest, then maybe we can try it more broadly. Broader, yeah. Okay, cool. Anybody on this call have questions about that? Hey, Adinka. Hi, Elizabeth. I was just talking about the new Badgers orientation that we have set up, so. Oh, sorry for coming late. I was stuck somewhere. No, you're fine. You're totally fine. No worries at all. OK. Awesome. Thank all you. Right. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you also for your help with that. I um, I guess we can go ahead and move on. We do have, we talked about this last week, a new Slack channel for open source job postings. I think there's a few people that joined that and we posted it in the general channel, but if you missed it, that's where you can go. I don't know that any jobs have been posted yet, um, but we are gonna also put that on LinkedIn as well. That's in the queue. So hopefully we'll get some some postings from outside folks, um, maybe. I mean, I guess that would require them to join our Slack, but oh well, mm -hmm. that's okay. The more the merrier, it's all right. I suppose that internal chaos folks could also just post links that they see 
If they see a job posting that looks cool. Yeah, like on behalf of, I see that pretty often. Like, yeah, there seems to be this good job. Yeah, somebody go grab it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Cool, all right. Any questions on that? Okie dokie. Oh. The next one, um, I wasn't sure if we would have anybody that is attending OSSEU on the call um, yeah, gonna... that wanted to talk about this. But it looks super, super interesting. I just wanted to drop it in here. I'm sure when Georg comes back, he'll talk more mm -hmm. about this. So I just wanted to make sure people saw it. Um, Georg had a really awesome summary in the general channel. Yep. Uh, this looks like a very this is in the um, the notes are super interesting as well of what the conversation was about so there were like uh, nine or ten people there too which was great yeah it was really interesting so just take a minute if you're interested in this um and read through it if you want yeah that's great i'm so glad that he did that and that people went that's really cool yeah super cool uh, for those who don't know what SDG is, I, I put a link here. I think this is um, probably the most informative place for this. These are the goals that they're trying to achieve. And so, you know, I think we're trying to see how open source software can play a part in these, but also how chaos can then feed into this as well. So it's, it's a giant, <laughs> it's a giant initiative. And we're just seeing what we can do to to help so super interesting stuff very very impactful and um great really great and if anybody has questions i cannot answer them but i will be happy to jot them down here on your behalf if you have be starting. there is a new working group and i think david lippert and somebody else is going to be leading that work yeah i, I wasn't to get just kind of like get some ideas of what people are interested in. David, and I was okay. Yeah, yeah, but I'm guessing that's who is going to at least be involved. And in mm -hmm. I think, yeah, David, maybe Georg will also be involved in and Ruth. Like Ruth and, had her name well, on there yeah. too. Yep. I'm not sure how that will unfold, but yeah, they're all seem to be interested. in. Yeah. That. So probably just for you, like when Georg gets back, like just keep your eyes open for any conversation. I mean, you, I can't imagine you'd miss it, but um, I, I don't know oh, if, like I any, anything that <laughs> you prove, I approve that wrong, <laughs> um, <laughs> but anything that might be needed to help set up the group, that's all. Yeah, for sure. And then I think Dave, well, David had reached out to me Bit way back when after that mm -hmm. initial UN meeting so um, okay. it's kind of already on the radar but yeah okay. then we decided to wait. so I think right we'll on. be good I think it's just trying to fit it in <laughs> to our chaos calendar but yeah. we'll, work, we'll make it work as long as I have somebody that is gonna like point me to the meet, meeting minutes and all the the stuff and like actually run it okay um, yep. yeah that'll be great we do have the for what it's worth you know how DEI had talked about going every other week mm-hmm there is a spot right there. True. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I'll just jot that down here. Yeah, I did not put that actually on the agenda. I probably should have about the DEI meeting going uh, bi weekly for those who missed that. That's a thing. Any other comments or anything on this, um, this topic? Again, super interesting stuff. We'll wait to see how that works out and then uh, hear more from Georg when he comes back. Um, okay, next thing is, I just put in here um, on behalf of Don, just to let everyone know that this was actually published. We've been talking about it for a long time. And here it is, if you wanna read it, it's good stuff. If you haven't seen it yet, then you should do so. and spread the word if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Any questions, comments on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Uh, I mentioned this at the beginning, we were just ch chatting. I don't even know if we started the recording yet. I don't think we had. Um, the community survey is ready to go. I just need a tester and I think Matt has agreed to do that. I, it'll take you like five minutes. So. Yeah, I, and it's just, this is the same survey that we ran two years ago, something like that, yep. whatever it is. Yeah, so exactly the same. The work we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, and I looked through it. The only thing that I changed really was um, we had listed the working groups and they were all out of date since then. Okay. So I just updated that, but really the rest is pretty pertinent still, so. Okay, cool, great. Um, if uh, you get a time, a chance to do that this week, uh, I can release it maybe next week. Oh yeah, that's fine. I'll have time this week. Okay, cool. So I'll just put on schedule to release this next week. And I guess that would involve just a blog post and then a LinkedIn post. Yeah, I'm gonna go Should I? Is this going to be annoying if I put a uh, like a link to it in every single Slack channel? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but also good. I get it. I understand the question. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> what is it? What do people think? What do other people think? Is that annoying? Should I leave it up to like the leaders of those groups? to spread the word in their groups? How should we spread this out, this community survey? So to make sure that we have a, a, an accurate um, input from all of the pieces of chaos. Maybe to start with general. Okay. Okay, and then we can see, and if we're not getting participation yeah. Yeah. from folks, then because yeah. I would really be interested in, um, you know, what even I don't want to say fringe members, but members that just attend one meeting, for instance, yeah. I would still be interested in what they have to say, and they may not. I would, yeah, hundred percent. I'm just imagining all channels getting in <laughs> at channel. <laughs> You're just gonna DM all two thousand people. <laughs> Hey, don't forget. <laughs> Fill out this survey. Yeah, they'd love that. <laughs> As we have mass exodus from <laughs> our Slack channel. Okay. All right. Anybody have any any other comments or questions about the community survey? Nope. Okay. Feel free to hop in chat or, you know, just raise your hand or whatever. I'm kind of moving through this agenda quickly. So if you do have something, don't hesitate to just raise your, you know, just jump in. A metrics and metrics models. That's just me. I wanted to let you know that we uh, decided on Thursday that we're going to keep both. We don't want to keep both of the meetings. We had talked about maybe merging them, um, but the concern is, is that if we do that, then the metrics part of our work will kind of get buried in the metric model meeting and then we won't do metrics. And so, so we're going to keep both meetings um, in the metrics model meeting. Uh, I just wanted to give people an update that the folks at Compass that are working on the Compass tool are in the process of deploying as many possible metrics, chaos metrics as they can. And we went through and identified um, which metrics they might want to focus on kind of as the next round. So let's say they've deployed, let's say we have like 90 metrics or something like that, whatever we have. And then obviously not all the metrics can be deployed via something like Compass. Um, so let's say that there's 60 metrics that could be deployed in Compass. They have done 20 of them. I'm making up numbers at this point, but they've done some percentage. So the question was, what, what would be the next set of metrics for them to focus on? And what we did was we decided that the metrics that 
are present in some of the practitioner guides that Don has published and um, metrics that are present in some of the metric models that may not have been deployed are going to be the kind of the top candidates and we went through the kind of the spreadsheet and identified um, what some of those could be um, or a, 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 a spreadsheet that they had provided um, so they're prioritizing this these metrics as kind of based on metrics and metrics models with the hope then um, that encompass, you know, if you wanted to see a practitioner guide in practice, uh, the metrics are there for you. Or if you want to see a model in, you know, in, in person <laughs> or in, you know, working, then the metrics are also there for you. So that's what we focused on in the metric model meeting. And then um, in the metrics meeting, we focused on identifying metrics you know that spreadsheet that has like released in progress um considering whatever it might be we decided yeah so we decided that we're going to start focusing on some of the metrics that make sense that would be like in those yellow rows you know so let's start kind of focusing on those in progress because some of them actually already have some word docs associated with them that are already kind of getting off the ground. So we're just going to start working through yeah, each of those tabs and kind of deciding which of the metrics are are worth taking a look at. Um, I kind of forget what we decided on in the next meeting, but that's what we're going to do. Um, and we're going to, Kevin, do you remember what it was, which one we did, chose? I don't remember. Uh, I don't. I have it here somewhere. I yeah, I, I do too. It, I'll, I'll drop it into the chat if I find it. Okay. Um, and so then we'll, we're will we going to put something for, this is the next meeting is next week. We're going to put something in Slack that just basically says, you know, <laughs> join us. This is, this is the absolute core work that we do. So, you know, we talk a lot about helping organizations think about community health and sustainability. We talk a lot about um, how to, uh, have an impact through our metrics, but we still need to do this metrics work. And I'm kind of getting back to that. Um, so anyway, that's it. That's the update on metrics and metrics models. Um, quick question. So do you see, um, so when these are deployed in Compass, there can be a dashboard built essentially for like this, like one practitioner guide, here are the three metrics. They, Go to this have, they have a tool where you can essentially like build your own metric model. And you can say, I want this metric and this metric and this metric and this metric. Go. And it will build an interface for you. So would we then build that and then link it to in the practitioner guys or will we just not like maybe i'm not sure i'm okay okay yeah, i'm not sure kind of what that flow would look like okay because that would be helpful but also that's one more kind of yeah and to... i don't know if it's if it's like if you let's say that you went to compass and put together the three metrics or four metrics that comprise a guide yeah like i don't know if, if when you do that if it stays persistent for everybody in compass gotcha Oh, code complexity. Thanks, Kevin. And also, if it would depend, like you'd still have to feed it in which projects you want to look at. So that would, I don't know how yeah. we would. No, so it'd yeah. just probably be like, hey, you can go to Compass and on this site. This is a thing you can do yourself. Yeah. yeah. This, you okay. could build it for yourself. Mm hmm. So this is the one that's being worked on next? Yep, code complexity. Perfect, awesome. I, I feel like they already have some, don't they have some data around this anyway already in Compass, do they? Code complexity? Yeah. They weren't part of that discussion. So that was, this was just us. Like, okay. they had dropped off at that point. So okay. this was just us taking a look at the spreadsheet and just kind gotcha. of picking one that 
probably seems pretty easy to do and might be valuable yeah. for people. Okay. There's a lot of there's a lot of prior work on code complexity and in general kind of software engineering software metrics work. So uh, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if, if they do have something in compass already for it. So Okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thanks you guys. Yep. Anybody have questions for Matt or Kevin? Okie doke. Right yes, we'll go on. I just want to remind the Chaos Con committee, anybody who was on that team and not here last week, we did decide um, to instead of taking this meeting and chopping it, because this meeting does tend to go long and we don't wanna leave out stuff that we need to talk about. Instead of doing that, we're gonna just meet after this meeting is over and we're gonna do it every other week. So um, we don't run into the project manager meeting. So this this week is an off week. Next week, if you're on the Chaos Con committee, just plan on sticking around a few minutes after the, this meeting is over. Can I just say sense. something really fast? Did you see that message from Georg in, on the chaos con committee channel yes well i saw one it was just about like it looks like our date is set january 30th and so the question was did anybody contact the bedford hotel that was oh it. yeah and i responded and i you said did. we did not, okay. yeah we did not yet because we were just kind of waiting on fostum to be official oh, you did before we commit okay <laughs> Okay, <laughs> making sure you saw it, and sure enough, you saw it, and I didn't see your <laughs> fact that you saw no, it. No, I, so. I always miss things, so I appreciate the backup. <laughs> <laughs> I miss I miss a lot. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess that's still kind of where we stand is just still waiting on FOSTEM. I know every seems like everybody else Everybody's is moving there. that direction. Right. Yeah, I saw State of Open UK is they've set their dates Have they? which is like mm -hmm. post FOSDEM I'm guessing yep. fourth and okay. fifth yeah um and then of course Georg, men Georg mentioned that other conference too yeah, that yeah. had yeah well <laughs> honestly it kind of feels like everyone's ahead of the curve this year uh, yeah maybe I feel, like, I feel like this stuff is usually later like even when we started talking about FOSDEM I was just like oh feels like it's almost a month early for us. Yeah, it might be. We're just super excited. <laughs> We're so enthusiastic. You, we we love conference planning. <laughs> <laughs> super fun. No, so like that's my fear is that <laughs> if we do wait for FOSTA, like is somebody going to grab that venue? And that day, I don't want that to happen either. I would, but... it's, I think it's okay to reach out to the Bedford. It's just okay. the, the guy I had talked to is super nice and yeah, okay. just say, hey, we're, you know, tentatively thinking January 30th. Is this can available? We, can we tentatively have you hold it for us yeah. <laughs> and give it to um, nobody else? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they, if FOSDEM does change the weekend, I don't, I can't imagine why they would do that or you know what would prompt it but i mean there's there are a lot of people people are making travel arrangements like there are a lot of people like oh <laughs> too bad mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. so I, I feel like even if they change the week um there will be a conference in brussels <laughs> like, it'll be an unconference because everybody will just be there anyway yep. so <laughs> maybe it'll just be chaos con all weekend and maybe yeah, everybody's <laughs> hanging out with us because we're all here anyway okay all right, any other questions or comments on the chaos con stuff? Okay, quick reminders, of course, here they are. We say them every time, but here they are again. So consider yourselves reminded of all these things. I am reminded. <laughs> yes, be reminded. I have been looking actually, this uh, brings up a, an idea that we had a few weeks ago with um, like a tip of the week on our Slack. And I have been uh, 
looking around quite a lot to see if there's a Slack bot already written that will let, let us do that. Just, you know, pop in a list of messages and tell it like every Monday, randomly pick from one of these messages. And put. There isn't anything um, that I have seen. That being said, I asked ChatGPT <laughs> today I, and it was a great answer. It gave me a great answer. I said, is there any Slack bot that will let me do this? And it said, um, no, but here are your options. And it said, you can write this in Python and it gave me the code to write it in Python if I wanted to write my own Slack bot. And it gave me a few other options like um, if this then that, which I had already looked at and um, the Slack bot workflow, which I had already looked at too. But I was like, damn, chat GPT. I'm just gonna <laughs> ask you about all the things in my life now. Oh my goodness. I've been trying to be more, less boomery about the AI stuff. And I, I've been asking it a lot. Yeah, I asked it about um, my speakers, like my old, you know, my display died. so. I had to buy speakers and everything else and the speakers that I bought off Amazon were cheap and so there's a little buzzing noise in them. So I was like chat GPT what can I do about this buzzing What's going noise? On? Mm -hmm. <laughs> a big long thing all about the audio and all about yeah. It's like dang all right. Okay. Shake it. So, <laughs> Hit it. And solve all my problems. <laughs> okay. Anything there else? Is, okay, speaking speaking of that and I um there is I think there's, I think we should look, I don't know. Uh, I'm thinking about like zoom here. I know we take minutes like this. Um, but I think there's also that AI companion, which can summarize the meeting. Yeah. And I'm wondering if we like, I'll try to take a look at that logging in as chaos like admin, if we have the ability to do that, or if somebody at the LF would have to do that for us. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know, I don't remember if it's free or not. It might be yeah, a charge. Matt, the only issue with that is data privacy. It has been discussed even within our AI community massively. And uh, okay. know China is still spying behind most of those things. Okay. And then okay. You, the, the European Act the, that protects data. I've also okay. given us concern because we don't know how they are managing it, how they are using it, and a lot of unknown. Fair. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's something okay. we should pay attention to just to be. Okay. Well, I'll look and see if it's even something we can do. And then to your point, like not just do it, but talk I mean, about there, are, there are a couple of open source alternatives and uh, other stuff that we can manage locally with our own bots. Okay. Yeah. We could do the same thing, like provide these summaries. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, that would be great. Um, also, just as an aside, kind of along those lines, we have been um, taking out the, the automatic bots that show up. Um, and I, tr I tried to, uh, I tried to block those domains in our zoom admin and yeah. it did not work. So right. I, don't, I don't know why it didn't work. Uh, it should work. But it didn't. So, because um, we did have those bots join again um, today, so I'm not sure what I need to can do. You do but it meeting I... by meeting. So I know you can. Like I've, I, I've blocked them before. And then it's like, it. I swear there was a checkbox or something that said, "Do you want this to apply to all future?" Oh. See okay. So take a yeah. look when you see it. Okay. Revisit the AI bot issue in Zoom. And it might just have to be meeting by meeting. That's all. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. Or you could ask Chat GPT. I think I might and just see what it says. <laughs> what it looks like. Yeah, that seems very that? circular. How to. <laughs> Very circular. Asking Chat AI how to block AI. <laughs> yeah, right. Chat GBT, how do I block you? <laughs> how do I turn you on? <laughs> oh, the future. I'm not ready for it. I can't handle it. I'm just excited that I get to wear a pizza hat. That's oh, that's really the at least that that's not true. AI will make your life easy. <laughs> <laughs> so you say, Armstrong. I trust yeah, you. Yeah, trust me. It's really facilitating task. You just need to know how to customize things and 
to to make them is just think about it like we want to automate a boring task that we have been doing manually and without careful looking into things then ai is just coming to facilitate and still put humans within the loop i know existential crisis might arise but we should forget about that ai <laughs> Just push that aside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Armstrong. I love it. That's awesome. All right, All right. everybody. Got a few minutes back. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thanks Take for showing care, up. Bye. See you later, everybody. Bye.